Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna compare four keyword research tools to see how they stack up against each other. And I've come up with some really interesting findings as well around uh, how all the different tools perform in various different ways. So it'd be really useful for you to get a bit of an understanding of which of these tools is best for certain situations. So this uh, video is in response to a question, a follower who asked me a question. They said, can you compare keywords everywhere with WMS everywhere uh, to see whether or not uh, how different they are and similar. So uh, I thought I'd do that, but I'd also include Keyword Surfer and Ahrefs as well. So the four tools that I'm testing are Keywords Everywhere, WMS Everywhere, Keyword Surfer, Ahrefs. You can see that WMS Everywhere, Keyword Surfer are free, Keywords Everywhere, $10 for 100,000 keywords. I've had uh, this one $10 lasting for about 18 months for me or whenever the Keywords Everywhere started charging. I gave them 10 bucks and I haven't had to give them money since. Uh, I did go through and edit the settings to make sure that uh, I could make the most out of those $10 and I have a Keywords Everywhere tutorial video where I'll show you that trick on how to do that. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna link it at the end of this video. And then Ahrefs, uh, there's a $7 free trial or a $7 trial for seven days or it's $99 a month. Okay, so in this video, I'm testing 27 keywords across all the keyword metric tools. I'm using US traffic only, not global traffic. That's because w WMS everywhere and Keyword Surfer only can't do global traffic. They can only do specific countries. So I did set them all to US. Um, so I'll go through my takeaways from the test and I discuss the pros and cons of each tool. And there are some interesting details there. So I just came up with some random keywords like how much wine is too much wine, uh, oldest McDonald's burger, best plant for the bathroom, is blogging dead, rules of monopoly. Just tried to come up with some random keywords. I came up with 27. And these are the raw results. You can pause this screen now if you want to have a look at them. Uh, but I just want to walk you through my findings from the results. Um, because it would just be boring if I just went through every single one of them. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at the, some of the findings. Uh, the first one was that WMS and Surfer can't render global traffic, as I just mentioned, uh, whereas Ahrefs and Keywords Everywhere can. So if you want to get the global traffic and not just the US traffic, uh, you're better off either going with Ahrefs or Keywords Everywhere. Okay. Um, this one was an interesting one that I actually hadn't thought about much until I did this study, and that's the plurals and punctuation marks often mess with the results. So always test both the plural, so best microphones for podcasting versus best microphone for podcasting. Oftentimes those results will be different, so test them and test with and without the question mark. In fact, you're probably better off just getting rid of the question mark altogether when you do your searching. Keywords Everywhere is better at accommodating for the question mark. So Keywords Everywhere notices the question mark and gets rid of it for you. Whereas WMS Everywhere is better at accommodating for punctual, punct plurality. So it usually sees the yes and accommodates for it. And I'll show you some examples here. So for this question, best microphones for podcasting versus best microphone for podcasting. Keyword Surfer and Keywords Everywhere re gave you different results depending on whether or not the S was there or not. So Keywords Everywhere was 180 per month for microphones with an S and 580 a month without the S. Keyword Surfer gave zero with the S and 9,900 without the S. So that was one real flaw I thought of Keyword Surfer in particular. WMS Everywhere does accommodate for plurality. So WMS Everywhere for best microphone and best microphones for podcasting gave the exact same result, 5,400, which was something I appreciated about the WMS uh, keyword research tool. Okay, here's the question marks example. Question marks, how much wine is too much with a question mark, WMS Everywhere and Keywords Everywhere both re rendered zero results. Whereas without the question mark, they did resent, render some results. So WMS Everywhere here without the question mark gave 1,000. Um, Keywords Everywhere does accommodate for where it seems to get rid of the question mark for you and will give you the exact same result. You can see with and without the question mark, it gave 1,300. So props to Keywords Everywhere there. They seem to be able to accommodate for punctuation a lot better than the other tools. Okay. One other thing that I found, this is finding number three, keyword surfers results were really questionable quite often. And in fact, from this study, I'm starting to think the keywords everywhere is, uh, sorry, keyword surfer is the least reliable of these tools. 
So it came up with zero search results results a lot more often than all of the competitors. And it, many of these zero search results, results just don't pass the common sense test. So for example, how to braid your hair. Obviously people search that term. Keywords Everywhere says 1,000 searches a month. WMS Everywhere, 880. Ahref, 600. Keyword Surfer, zero. Same thing goes for best time of day to exercise, the rules of monopoly, and what comes after generation Z. All of them, all the other tools said there were plenty of results for them and Keyword Surfer said zero. I think that that doesn't pass the common sense test, so I am a bit wary of Keyword Surfer. Number four, Keywords Everywhere and Ahrefs identify long tail search volume more often than competitors. In the study, Ahrefs rendered zero search volume results zero times, meaning every single search, Ahrefs did find some search volume. Keywords Everywhere found search volume for all but one of them, and then WMS Everywhere, all but three of them, and then Keyword Surfer, 12 times out of 27, didn't render any search volume for some of these keywords that definitely would get search volume just based on common sense. So again, I'm a little bit wary of Keyword Surfer, whereas Keywords Everywhere and Ahrefs, I think are better at accommodating for certain things like the question marks, for example, and they make sure that uh, they can find you the search volume um, by using their algorithm to make sure that maybe that you know maybe there is some search volume if they just get rid of the question mark, so they do it for you. Okay, so keywords everywhere and Surfer sometimes line up perfectly, but not always. And this was really um, it, it. It was so serendipitous sometimes that I thought they must be using the same API. So for example, how much wine is too much wine? Uh, 1,300 for keywords everywhere, 1,300 for Surfer, WMS and Ahrefs have their own results. When does Ramadan start? 12,100 for keywords everywhere and 12,100 for Surfer. How long do turtles live? 12,100 for keywords everywhere and for Surfer. That was just such close results. But sometimes, so for example, best microphone for podcasting, the results differ dramatically, 580 versus 9,900. So I have a feeling that Surfer and Keywords Everywhere may use the same API, but then they do their own filtering after that for things like punctuation or, or plurality and other things like that, which may be the reason why Keywords Everywhere is a little bit better at identifying longer tail terms and things than Surfer, because Keywords Everywhere may have better filters after rendering the results from the API. That's just a guess, I'm not sure, but uh, just very often keywords everywhere and surfer tended to have very similar results and then when they didn't have similar results it varied wildly for some reason okay so that were the findings of the, the study so the findings were things like uh, make sh making sure that you don't use a question mark making sure that you ch test plurality and of course that keywords everywhere and ahrefs tend to be better at identifying long tail keywords here are some opinions I have. So they're not findings, but they're things that I'm trying to deduce from what I've seen. So it's really unfortunate that the KGR is linked to one specific person because it means I can't critique a concept without seeming as if I'm critiquing a person. But nonetheless, I'm not gonna hold back in saying I'm not particularly a fan of the KGR and I think this study has helped uh, bolster my argument that the KGR is not a good way to assess the level of competition of a keyword because within the KGR you have to have the search volume below 250 and then use that search volume figure in a division in order to find out whether or not the keyword is high or low competition and given the huge variations in the search volume between all of these tools it it seems to me as if uh, it's just better to look at the quality of the SERPs and at the backlink profile. Um, so to look at things like the length of articles ranking and whether or not they've got the right search intent um, and whether or not there's a lot of links pointing to the articles that are ranking. But the idea of uh, associating really flawed search volume figures to competition levels, it, it doesn't work because these search volume figures are just way too variable to say, oh, only rank for things that have got search volume under 250 or something. It just doesn't make sense to me, unfortunately. And I think uh, this study showing the huge variations in search volumes between the tools just reinforces that the KGR just isn't the best way to understand whether or not something is competitive and whether you can rank for that key term.
However, I do think that keyword volume is still useful. And one of the reasons it is still useful is it gives a general guideline to look at before doing the competition analysis to see, well, are people searching for this term or not? If there are more than, you know, if, if across the four tools, all four of the tools are saying that there is search volume, it increases my confidence that there is definitely search volume for this term. It would be really interesting if someone managed to get the APIs for these four tools and then do some sort of a confidence interval test to see, to render sort of maybe the average search volume or something and then how confident you are that there's search volume based upon the fact that all four or three out of four of these tools are sort of lining up quite closely. That would be really interesting to see. Okay, so this next one is that the keyword volume tools do have awesome additional features. So even if you don't believe in that these keywords research tools are any use at all. Um, and they, they just, you have no belief or faith in this search volume metric of these tools. It is still worth using these tools because they give you things like the people also search for box. WMS and Keywords Everywhere has a really good one for that. Related keywords, again, WMS and Keywords Everywhere have good ones for that. Um, Surfer generates a graph that tells you the page length of each of the pages on the front page of the SERP so you know how long you should write your articles uh, in order to be around about the same as your competitors. Uh, Ahrefs has really good, this is the thing about Ahrefs, its search volume is really wrong. In fact, I think it's lower than most of the other tools, but it does have really good um, tools like also rank for and keyword ideas that can generate hundreds of keywords ideas really quickly. It can also reverse engineer competitors really well. So even though Ahrefs search volume is not very good, that's not why you use Ahrefs. Um, and then you can also explore a, a page's other keywords to do really good on-page optimization with keywords everywhere. I'm going to do a video. It's literally in the next video I'm going to record on uh, how to use all those hidden features of keywords everywhere. But I'll show you an example right now. If you have keywords everywhere turned on, you can go to, you'll see this rendered next to every single SERP. The traffic it, the, the page is getting and the keywords that the page ranks for. So for allaboutbirds.org, this was for the Eagle range search, which was one of the 27 in the study. It'll, it might tell you that the search volume for where the bald eagles live is 500 or something. But it will also tell you that, that a page is getting a lot more traffic than that because it's ranking for more keywords and it tells you all of the other keywords that it ranks for. So if you click on the 53 keywords right there, it'll bring up this graph. And this graph shows you that not only does this page rank for where do bald eagles live, but all of these other keywords as well. And it's ranking in the top SERP positions for these keywords. So what you should do is when you're gonna write about a keyword, click into this also rank for, for the top two or three or four of the competitors who you're gonna to try to beat when you're targeting a keyword and make sure that you use all of these semantic terms. Make sure you use terms like do bald eagles migrate, habitat map, territory, range. These are phrases that you should be putting in so that you're not, so that you're equaling your competitors and you're making sure that you're using similar phrases to them so that you're telling the Google algorithm, hey, I'm gonna try to rank and stand up against all these other pages. So I would consider putting do bald eagles migrate as an H2. I would consider including a habitat map. Um, Maybe I'll talk about the, the range in which bald eagles can fly as another H2, those sorts of things. So I'm more holistically addressing the keyword and, and showing that I am um, addressing all of the semantic phrases that should be addressed if you try to target that keyword. And you'll probably get more traffic because you'll rank for more long tail keywords. So in the next video, I'll show you even more hidden features in Keywords Everywhere, uh, including how to make sure that your uh, Keywords Everywhere $10 lasts as long as possible for you. So hang tight for that. And if that video has released, I will include it right here in this white space that's next to me. I think it might be that way. Uh, there should be a, um, a, the link to that video where you can watch about how to use Keywords Everywhere. So thanks for that, guys. And uh, if you've got any comments or questions, leave them below. Please don't argue with me about stupid stuff like the KGR. If you disagree with me, deal with it.